that, as everybody uh, should know by now, uh, we've got field day coming up here pretty shortly. Um, uh, we're, what, six, seven weeks away from field day? So, um, anyone that was at field day last year probably saw a rather large antenna out there, and uh, our guest speaker tonight had uh, to say he had a pile up with, to say with East. He, he, he was one busy one busy operator and uh, to talk about his setup and uh, all things field day, uh, I'd like to introduce Fred Miller, KS2X. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for and, and uh, I like talking about this because it's not often that I have a plan that actually works out the way I intended it to. So. <laughs> It's nice to be feel shocked up. Go along with it. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Um, we were looking to improve upon what we were doing, in particular with the 20 meter station that uh, I was running, uh, and we just weren't having a lot of luck on uh, the 20 meter single sideband. Uh, we've been using G5 RV antennas. Uh, they were horizontal. Uh, up probably around 35 feet, and it just didn't work all that well uh, for us. We had very limited su uh, success with it. We had a lot of interference with the other stations at the site. Uh, the front end of the receiver was really getting overloaded, for instance, by the 20 meter CW station on the other end of the band. Uh, and we had very little luck getting people to pull us back. We called CQ, field day, CQ, field day, and it was like, hello, anybody out there? And we didn't, I think uh, in the previous year, out of a whole bunch of efforts, we got one whole response. Wow. It wasn't very successful. So we were doing a lot of work in tech. Uh, so we tune up the band, find a spot where there was some activity and try to get a hold and break through and finally make a contact. And so you were lucky if you made a contact every 10 to 15 minutes, which is, wasn't exactly super satisfying. And I got an idea about going a different way. It came from an experience I had when I lived back in New York in a local ham club there. Uh, had their field day down at a park by Long Island Sound. Uh, and Long Island Sound, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, attached to the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So it's salt water. And what he did was he took a couple of 20 meter verticals and put them into the salt water uh, and phased them so he could uh, make the uh, antenna be directional and turn it. And the thing worked awesome just was really, really well. Uh, we've had uh, some towers with uh, beams on it, and it was actually outperforming those to, to set up. So I thought it was a really good idea. Uh, and so I said, well, maybe there's something we can do that's similar to that here. Uh, so we started on the, the path of going to do these phased antennas. Uh, unfortunately, I only got to one of them, but it turned out it was, it was a good one. And so I looked at doing a vertical. Uh, and if you do just a plain vertical dipole, you're looking at something that's going to be around 33 feet high. So you've got to get a support up high, and it's not, not the easiest thing to do. But the common alternative that you see a lot of people using is a quarter meter antenna mounted on the ground, and then with radios run. And uh, as you're probably aware, if you bury the radios deep, they work in an inferior way than if they're on the surface. But you need a lot of them to do a good job, and you need actually a good conductivity in the ground, and our earth isn't all that wonderful for it. And so this is, becomes the other half of the antenna. And so what we decided to do uh, was to try to do some, uh, go to a, um, a, a, a station where we had it as a ground plane. Uh, we just couldn't reach the soil point here. So the ground plane would elevate the feed point. To it. Uh, and you can use, some people say three, I would say two is a minimum. Uh, we chose to use four radials, and the radials come down at a 45 degree angle. The angle of the radials has an impact on the, um, the, the um, impedance, that's the word I'm looking forward to, it. and then you get a good one at 45 degrees. Uh, and so it makes a really excellent ground. Uh, you need a lot fewer wires to do it and a very good feed point match uh, to doing it. 
And so this was the antenna that we ended up uh, with, and tell you a little about how we put it together. So uh, the overall it performed very well. We set it up and we made the radials a little longer than we thought we would need them. We used an antenna analyzer and we shortened it a little bit and we ended up with a 1.21 SWR without messing with it further uh, to do it. Uh, we ended up without any interference with the other stations on the site. Uh, our transmissions weren't bothering other stations and the other transmissions weren't affecting us. And the real the reason for that was we had cross polarization. The, uh, we were operating a vertically polarized antenna and everybody else was operating horizontally polarized antennas. And so our uh, calling CQ went from silence to pileups. We started working three and four calls at a time. Uh, it, was, uh, it was really a remarkable uh, difference. And so it really worked out very nicely. We were very happy with it. Let's talk a little about how we made it, the, the thing. The, um, the vertical support there was a 12 foot two by four. Nothing in the antenna, by the way, it was made for radio usage, with the exception there's an SO239 connector uh, to do it. And made a hinge base plate on it. And so what the, the idea with the hinge base plate was, you can see here, there was a block attached to the two by four and a hinge. And you put this plate down and put some spikes in so it wouldn't slide, and then you just walk the antenna up, and then you were able to hold it in place with the, uh, the, the, the guy wires. <coughs> we used ground stakes on each uh, corner, the four corners, and then we're able to uh, tune it. And, uh, Tom did a great job of getting us nice and vertical uh, to, to do it. And at the top, uh, what we did is we put uh, eye bolts through the two by fours. Uh, probably got a little overly strong than we needed to, but as opposed to having a screw that might pull out, you drill all the way through and then put a, um, a, a, a nut on the, on the other side, and so you really can't just pull those things through. And there are four of these uh, ratchet straps, and along with the ratchet straps, a little hard to see, you might be able to tell, in, in uh, part of the area here, uh, but uh, there's the wires hanging down on each of the four of them uh, to do it. Uh, so the vertical radiator went up from there and total was about 17 feet high and used U-bolts uh, to attach the um, and that vertical radiator to the top of the two up there. So pretty straightforward. <laughs> And so overall, we ended up supporting the antenna with the four straps. We've got the, uh, the uh, guide wires, uh, the radials uh, down to the, each of them, uh, and held it, and then fed the uh, coax there at the center point of the antenna. It worked really well. Very simple. Anybody with questions? Yeah. <laughs> What's the antenna on top, the vertical part of it? <coughs> The vertical part was three pieces of aluminum that I found around. The lower portion of it uh, was actually a part of a uh, pole used to clean the top of a swimming pool. And <laughs> another uh, piece of it was actually designed to uh, slide in with another piece. Put the second piece in and then adjust the height of it. I just put uh, worm clamps on it so it just slides down and stops. And the very top part of it was actually part of an old flagpole. To do okay. it, so you just stick them in a couple months. I used uh, a couple of field days. I put up a 50 foot fiberglass with the wire running down the middle, yeah. eight radials, and ran eight ran all the bands on that vertical, and it really worked good. And you talked about phase. Uh, one of the field days several years ago, I put up phase verticals on 20 and 15, yeah. and uh, you could rotate them 90 degrees, yeah. and it, uh, they worked really well. Yeah. They really did. And I was not a pro proponent of verticals for a long time until <laughs> I put these up and saw what yeah. they did. Well, someday what I'd like to do is make another one of these and hook it up in the face connection. I think it would work really work very nice. Yeah. Yeah. All of your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you have a wire in those guy wire? Guy, that's where yeah, the radio is. <laughs> Look real carefully here. There's wires coming off around here. 
and then they just follow along down the way. Okay. The straps. And then you actually trimmed them until they were giving you good. Well, actually, do, we intentionally made them a little longer. I was advised to make the, the vertical radiators stay the same length and play around with the radiators. And uh, then what we did is we just doubled it back to shorten it. Oh, until okay. We, I got you. So we got to the position. So we just wrapped the wire back on. So. And you had four radial? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Sometimes simple works, right? <laughs> how far away, how far away did you, was your contact? Oh, we got them all over the country. Uh, probably worked to Y2, I don't remember. I mean, it, it was, when you, you got on fr frequency and you started calling CQ in no time at all, you had a lot of people calling. It was working very effectively. 20 meter vertical that I used on field day several years ago, I worked uh, right side, back to back. And, and one of, uh, Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. and the next station that, that called me was Hawaii, mm -hmm. on 20 meter vertical. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. 20 can work quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, it worked, they worked good, it worked good on 15 too. I had them set up on 15 too, yeah. and, and it worked, worked yeah. good anywhere. Yeah. Like I said, I put up a 50 footer, and I worked all the bands on that one. Yeah. That field day. The vertical got a little angle of radiation. Yeah, good radiation. Yeah. 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 And if you use a remote tuner right there at the base of the vertical, then you can take all that coax out of the out of the antenna. Oh, okay. And uh, you don't have that to, to affect the uh, speeds and the SWR. Okay. And uh, so it works. It, yeah, yeah, 50 foot fiberglass vertical is great. I just run a wire down the inside. Did you have to use anything to guy it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to put up three guys and. Uh, uh, and I, I laid out, the first year I used it, I, I did four radials. And I said, well, you know, let's play with this a little bit. So the next time I used eight, and I had to readjust SWR, because SWR went lower. Yeah. And uh, so <coughs> I got to where I was using it on 40, so I threw in a couple of 40 meter radials, just to make it work. And it, like I said, it works It works great, man. Don't, don't discount a vertical. Yeah. One of the fun things I think is these days is uh, antennas are something you can mess around with and play around with. Used to be back in the Stone Age when I first got my ham radio license, you could get in there and work on a tube socket and try some different components and stuff like that. And yeah, it's not so easy to do it anymore, but you still can work on antennas. <laughs> and, you can, and it's very satisfying. And you, yeah, well, you know, I've always told people, you know, you have the most expensive radio in the world. And if the antenna's a piece of crap, you're not going to be satisfied. Yeah. Or you can have the cheapest, ugliest looking radio in the world and a good antenna system and it works just wonderful. Yeah. And it, it so the antenna is, is, a, is an important <coughs> part of the radio. It really is. No, no good question about it. Uh, in terms of field day, uh, we uh, actually just recently finally got assurances that we have the location in Germantown at the municipal park that we've been using that's available for us this year. So we'll be gearing up to operate from there and looking to have a, a good uh, a, a good uh, time with it. Uh, it uh, the, uh, it's the 22nd and 23rd of June. Uh, a lot of people seem to get confused, as Joe will point out, but they think it's the last <laughs> <laughs> we get, but it's actually the fourth weekend, full uh, weekend in June. So. Yeah, I got the last weekend penciled in on my calendar. I had to change it. Yeah, what was funny was uh, one of the other things in the show that I'm sure Radio Club is doing. So we're going to have the special event station in concert with the Germantown Charity Horse Show, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary. And we decided to get a special event call sign, we W4G, G for Germantown. And I, when I looked it up, there were two clubs that had signed up for W4G for field day on different weekends. One had the right one and had the wrong weekend to do with it. So hopefully we'll see everybody for that. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Do you have all the stations filled for field day? or? or yeah. is there no, we really need to find out who wants to come out and set up and start now that we have the site fulfilled. Yeah. We need to find out who wants to do it and sponsor, essentially take charge and make sure we have some space and come out and do the thing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. That was fantastic. And I, I just have to jump in real quick in person and say, I was at the field day last year and watched the pileup that was generated by this antenna, and it was just amazing. <laughs> Hadn't quite seen a pileup that big in quite some time. All right. Um, we are at the end of the program, so I want to take a couple of seconds and ask everybody to make sure to fill out the signal report that's on your table. It's a QR code. There are some paper copies up on the front table if you'd like a paper copy to fill that out. Uh, we certainly appreciate that feedback. Uh, again, Scott's got a question on there about what is your snack preferences, so we can get that as well. So I'll take an opportunity to fill that out. A couple of additional announcements. We've said it a, a couple of times, but I'll put them all in one type package for you. Um, museum ships on the air, that's June 1st, 10 to 2, Poplar States. Field day, we just talked about, it's June 22nd to the 23rd. And then I want to also remind everybody about the Huntsville bus, bus trip, the Huntsville bus trip to the Ham Fest in Huntsville, and that is August the 17th. And there's no better way than to ride the Delta bus down to the Huntsville Ham Fest and enjoy that. We need a big crowd this year, so if you haven't ever been, uh, let us know and we'll save you a seat. It's a cheap fare. Couldn't get a better deal. Uh, with that, I'll open the floor. Are there anybody that has any announcements? Ham 101 next month, we're going to talk about propagation and uh, radios and uh, uh, I forget what the third topic is, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Those of you that uh, are interested will, because if you were trying to get on HF this past weekend, you'll understand why propagation is important, because it was the pits this weekend. So we made 45 contacts at the, our course today where we normally make 100, 150. So it was terrible propagation because of the soil. Except for Texas. Except for Texas, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we, had, we had one contact in Texas. They had about six or seven guys with one, somebody's ham shack. And we talked to one and then they just passed the mic around. To all of them. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so anyway, uh, we're going to talk, talk a little bit about that next month. Fantastic. Any other announcements from the uh, membership? All right. I'll make a motion we adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded. All right. There's a motion to adjourn with a proper second. Uh, is it all in favor of adjourning? Vote. Uh, all right. Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. All right, guys and gals, appreciate you coming out.